While in Belém, Brazil, we started every day like most any other day here in the States. Mornings welcomed us with a familiar smell of coffee and the song of friendly birds outside. We opened our Bibles and read God's Word and prayed that He might show us the city through His eyes. As we looked about, the scenery was a bit different from Oklahoma. Belém's nickname is the City of Mangoes because many of the streets are lined with mango trees. In a place with the Amazon rainforest so near, God's hand to us seemed ever apparent. However, God can seem far away as you walk its bustling city streets of two plus million people and see the world's religions vying for control of men's hearts. As we walked in the non-stop traffic and crowded streets of Belém, we found that the people had a lot in common with us. They needed clean water and enjoyed good food. People needed employment who were hard working and took whatever job they could do to provide for themselves and their families. People who no doubt were searching for the peace and happiness that all humanity longs for in their lives. And no matter where we went, young people were the same. They smiled, played, and stared at the strangers walking down their street. Most Brazilians were friendly and had welcoming smiles as we were greeted, Bon dia or good day. On occasion we had a few opportunities to talk with them beyond a simple greeting. And speaking through an interpreter, we found that they spoke as if they knew God, but upon further conversation saw that they are inundated with this world's religions of idols and selfish desires. And although their idols are a little more visible at times, we recognize that familiar idol of materialism that runs rampant through our own country. Even though parts of Brazil may be considered third world, in the 21st century you'll find that they have giant malls and skyscrapers. They have smartphones and drive nice cars. Local markets, grocery stores, and gas stations mark up the landscape as they do in any American town. They have McDonald's, Pizza Huts, Burger Kings, sushi, and Chinese food. Yet you can take a short trip and leave the bustling city and see the river that separates the city from the jungle. And at the tip of the peninsula that is Belém, there's the remnants of the fort that started the city in 1616. And on its banks is one of South America's largest open air markets called Beto Peso, where fresh food from the river and surrounding areas is unloaded and put out to sell. It is a place with sharp contrasts. We saw rundown buildings and graffitied walls right next to new high rise apartments and nice businesses. There are people in suits living and working next to homeless people who beg and sleep in the streets. All this makes the physical needs of Belém easy to see, like many of the big cities in our own country. Brazil is currently recovering from one of the biggest recessions in its history, caused in part by the corruption of the government. One ex-president is in prison, and the president in 2016 was impeached due to her suspected involvement. This is also one of the reasons for the great contrast between those who have and those who don't. And yet they all have one important thing in common. From Brazilians who have nice homes and a good job, to the Venezuelan refugees living on the streets. When you sit and watch people going about their everyday life, it's easy to see and hear those things that might separate us, like language, culture, politics, or economic status. But God only sees people that He sent His Son to die on a cross for. Souls aren't separated by nationality, money, status, or color. Our hope is that as you look at these people, you'll see that they are people just like us and our families, who are in need of a real Savior. Idols, Mary worship, materialism, atheism, and mysticism is what fills Belém spiritually. It is famous for its religious icon to whom the city is named after. It sits dead in a glass box, unable to help anybody. Yet the city flocks to tie on little ribbons on the fences that guard it, symbols of their prayers. They have put their hope in something built with man's hands, their faith wrapped up in long-standing traditions and superstitions. But the wind is the only thing that will ever move those ribbons. The sun, rain, and time will erode them along with their hope. Their idol can never bring them peace with God and the answers they diligently search to find. Then one day, they will stand before God, and that's the moment where the knowledge of the truth will be too late for them. Romans 10.2 sums it up perfectly. They have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. It is a stronghold that's heartbreaking to behold. They have a museum for their beloved idol and a big parade called the Sitio de Nazaré, 
that's been held every year in October since 1793. The city's population doubles as followers come from the outlying towns and around the world to witness this box idol on parade. The people carry and lay figures of their prayer at its base, and many crawl behind this idol for penance for themselves or loved ones, hoping to earn the Holy Mother's grace and part her from sin. While others make the three-mile trek barefoot in reverence, they desperately try to grab the ropes that tradition tells them connect them to their idol and cling to them until their hands bleed. This rope they call an umbilical cord to the Holy Mother Mary. They believe this idol was carved by Saint Joseph and put in Belém in the year 1700 for a man named Placido to find. He then took it and proclaimed its ability to do miracles. So this Portuguese settled town once named Happy Lusitania eventually changed its name to Santa Maria de Belém, which means Saint Mary of Bethlehem, to further show her deep devotion to Mary. You see the hunger and a devotion of the people everywhere. There are buildings of worship with worn floors on nearly every street. There are religious signs on the doors of their homes, their businesses, and their vehicles that proclaim Dios de Fiel, or God is faithful. People carry worn Bibles and rosaries to protect them, treating them like their lucky rabbit's foot. Yet it is true their devotion would shame many Christians, that they lack the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life and no man coming to the Father but by me. We will be partnering with Chris Bell and his family in Belém. They were able to move there in April of 2018. And while we were staying with them during our survey trip, I had the opportunity of meeting and talking with a pastor in Anandewa, a suburb of Belém. The Bells are currently attending this church for fellowship as they acclimate to the culture and learn Portuguese further. Chris's wife Brenda was able to translate for us as we spoke with Pastor Fablo. I asked how Brazilians felt about American missionaries and if there were any churches in the area that preached the truth. He said that Belém and the surrounding area is full of organizations and so-called churches who preach a cheap gospel. He said he needed lots of help preaching and sharing the truth, no matter where it came from, because there is a lack of a true gospel presence in this metropolitan area of more than three million people and of any real churches. He went on and said, in spite of the fact that we live in a very Catholic state, the greatest difficulty is the very large number of false churches who claim to preach the gospel but do so incorrectly. And so when we arrive with the true gospel, the people are already confused, which makes it difficult. He encouraged us and offered any help upon our entrance into the country. He also told us he's been praying for us since he heard of our call to Belém. I asked if he had any prayer requests that I could share with the churches in America. His first request, that we would pray for him and the other churches in Brazil. He wanted us to pray that they wouldn't compromise but stay faithful to the gospel, even as people walk out their doors to have their ears itched and consciences soothed by false gospels that fill some of the largest churches. He finished by asking us to pray that God would call men into the ministry from their church. A city is more than lines on a map or a name on a sign. People make it what it is, and these are the people that God has called me and my family to go share the gospel with. As you prayerfully consider partnering with us, please keep Belém, Brazil, and its faithful few in your prayers. Thank you for allowing us to be here to share our burden. We are the Mendoza family, sent out of Edmund Road Baptist Church, pastored by Chuck Munson. We look forward to what God will do with us and through our partnership in the gospel.